Monster Guys present a Yokai podcast presentation, bringing to life, through short stories and informative discussion, the strange, the beautiful, the whimsical, and the mystery of Japanese yokai. Now, please enjoy a story about the Kuchisake Ona in a story titled Candy Coated Ghost Stories. Written by C. Michael McGannon, narrated by D.C. McGannon, presented by The Monster Guys. Haruhi and her friends walked home together from school every day, and had since they were little. The three were nigh inseparable and did everything as a trio. As much as they could, anyway. Walking home, taking lunches, studying, you name it. Slumber parties were had often, and ghost stories were a regular pastime thanks to Tomome, the tomboy of the group. And then he opened the fridge, whispered Kichiko. But instead of groceries, he only found empty containers and plates. Dummy, Tomome laughed at Kichiko. All of the food disappearing is not that scary. A ghost eating all of your food is very scary, Kichiko crossed her arms, trying to appear more intimidating than she actually was. It didn't work. Tomome leaned in, and Haruhi and Kichiko both set forward a little. You know what's really scary? She's back. Nice try. Kichiko narrowed her eyes. I'm not going to fall for your bait and ask. Who's back? asked Haruhi. Haruhi, cried Kichiko, exasperated. Don't encourage her. Tomome continued. The question asked. The woman with the ghastly smile. The one who died thousands of years ago when her husband murdered her out of jealousy and rage. The Kuchisake Ona. Haruhi and Kichiko both sat back, sharing a bemused glance. Of all the urban legends to bring up. Really? The Kuchisake Ona? The one that goes around asking everyone if she's pretty? And then cutting them up, either way they answer, added Haruhi. Everyone has heard about her, Kichiko continued. You might as well tell us about Hanako-san. Tomoma's eyes clouded over. The difference is, she's real. They're all real, Kichiko said with a laugh. That's what makes them scary. I'm serious. Back in the 70s, there was a woman who chased children around, terrorizing them until she was hit by a car. When they looked at her body, her face was split by a slit mouth smile. It's real. Look it up if you don't believe me. But there was a body, said Haruhi, always the voice of reason. So she died. So it can't be a ghost. The body disappeared, Tomome whispered quietly. She unwrapped a piece of hard candy, popping the caramel into her mouth. A month ago, there was a girl who went missing. When they found her, her face had a smile carved from ear to ear and her throat was slit. Haruhi threw an eraser at her thrill-seeking storytelling friend. You're making that part up. Am I? She wasn't the only one, either. There was a boy who even saw her. Kichiko harumped smartly. Let me guess, he lived to tell the tale? He threw candy at her, and she was distracted by it, escaped with his life. She crumpled her candy wrapper for emphasis. Okay, now we know you're just telling tall tales. It's true! Haruhi listened to her friends bicker and squabble, smiling to herself. After all, it was only one more of Tomome's attempts to scare them. It was just a story, right? All right, all right, she said, having to raise her voice over the arguing too. Enough about the Kuchisake Ona. I'm going to tell you a really scary story. Tomome rolled her eyes. Oh, yeah? Yes. So the other day, Kichiko asked me to help her with her homework. A week later, they broke pattern. Kichiko was on a trip with her family and Tomome was sick. Haruhi found herself walking to school alone, using the rare occasion to throw her headphones volume way up. She knew where she was, paying little attention to where her feet were actually going. Closing her eyes to jam out with an impressive air guitar solo, Haruhi slammed into something solid and unmoving. She stumbled back, embarrassed when she saw the woman she had run into. I'm so sorry, I... Haruhi stopped talking, seeing the woman had a coat drawn up around her face. 
She was pale, with long, lush, black hair and eyes that were intense, focused on Harihi. Tomome's story of the woman with the slit mouth crept back into her mind, sending a shiver up the girl's spine. Harihi heard that question in her mind, trying to shake it off internally, to laugh it out of her mind. But then the woman asked it, Do you think I'm pretty? Harihi's blood ran cold. This couldn't be real. This had to be some stupid prank. But still, if it were real, Harihi stood no chance. According to the story, if she answered yes, she would be horribly cut up, scarred forever. But if she answered no, the woman's hands were behind her back. Harihi could only imagine the gleaming, razor-sharp scissors held there. The woman's eyes started to narrow. If she stalled too long, Harihi's choice would be made for her. I, I think, Harihi! The woman's eyes snapped to the side and Harihi looked in the same direction. Tomome was there, running toward her, waving her arms. Harihi started to warn her friend, looking back to the woman, but the woman was no longer there. Harihi was alone. She shivered, feeling as if a spirit of death had walked right past her without incident. Harihi, you dummy, where have you been? I've been waiting at your house for like hours now. Weren't you... Harihi looked around, more than a little distracted. Weren't you sick? Tomome shrugged. Since when has that ever stopped me? She dug into her pockets, pulling out a few pieces of candy, offering a few to Harihi, who took them almost too eagerly. You all right, Harihi? Harihi nodded. I'm fine. Just seeing things, I guess. As they walked home, Harihi dropped a few pieces of candy in her wake. For a moment, she almost thought she had heard a question lingering on the slight afternoon breeze. Do you think I'm pretty? Listeners of our Yokai podcast should remember from our earlier days another story about the slit mouthed woman or the Kuchisaki Ona. Yeah, you say our earlier days. <laughs> we we haven't been around we'll, that long. We've been we've been at this for so many years now. I know. <laughs> it right. feels like it sometimes. But yeah, um, just uh not too many episodes ago, we did uh an episode on the Kuchisake Ona and we retold a classic tale about her and this time you've actually written an original tale bringing it forward almost into the urban legend arena that a lot of people talk about today. Well, definitely, because that's that's exactly what she's become. I mean, it's you know she's still part of the folklore, the mythology, and the culture, but she has lived on and joined the ranks of those urban legends like the the toilet ghost Hanako-san and some of the other things that kind of get spread around the school hallways and around street corners these days. Yeah, and in the story, you've actually through the three girls talking referenced some of the newspaper articles and TV reports that were popular in the 70s about the Kuchisake Ona appearing in person in Japan. Yes. Uh, you know, it's interesting because there have actually been sightings of her, if you will. In the 70s, there was a woman who chased children around and she did wear a mask and she was hit by a car. In the coroner's report, this is an actual documented thing. She did have that split mouth, that carved smile into her face. There are sightings past that as early as the 2000s, but those have been confirmed to be um, just hoaxes. But I, I always go back to those events in 1970 or in the 1970s as just an interesting little piece. I will say that the whole thing about the body disappearing and everything, that's part of the story. I don't think I've ever read that actually being a thing, but it does make one scratch their head and wonder what exactly did happen back in the 1970s? It is a, a point of interest for sure. And I would I would ask our listeners, if you have information or conversation or anything that you could add to this story or this conversation, definitely chime in with us, uh, whether on Twitter, Facebook, or on the website or whatever. We'd love to hear from you and, and gain more insight from uh, other parts of the world or other perspectives. We always love hearing other people's opinions on these things because it is very interesting and definitely 
something that lives on very strongly in the minds of people today. It is. And um, she's as spooky as she is, as terrifying as she is, almost to that same, you know, creepypasta level as Slenderman, where there's really no escape. She does have some kind of goofy aspects about her that really brighten up her urban legend. You know, as if you could brighten this up. Okay, well, so brighten it up for us. Okay, so... so Those are, that's an interesting term to use. Well, if you go by the story, you know, she'll stop and she'll ask, do you think I'm pretty? If you answer no, then she will stab you with scissors. If you answer yes, then she will remove her mask and reveal the, you know, the horrible scars across her face. And she'll ask you the same question, do you think I'm pretty? Now you have a new set of options. You can say again, yes and she will carve your face to be like hers. If you answer no, she'll just cut you in half completely with her scissors, which to me is interesting, the progression from stabbing to cutting somebody in half, but there you go. Some pretty impressive scissors too. And I guess for a long time, that was it. But as urban legends go and as stories change, especially in like the schoolyards and everything, other options are given now. Um, it's said that you can outsmart her and say that, you know, she's so-so and this kind of confuses her and she walks away or you can throw candy at her and almost like some European vampire Empire, she has to stop and pick up all the candy. Or you can say the word pomade, and apparently she's terrified of the word pomade because she'll actually leave you alone for long enough for you to get away. And I I still can't find where the whole pomade thing comes from. That's just, to me, that's what I mean by it brightens it up. It's just weird and bizarre, and I have no explanation for that. But apparently yeah, it just, works. So. Yeah, just new additions to the story as we go, and who knows what we'll come up with next. <laughs> kind of reminds me of some of our Western legends. Legends, Bloody Mary and, and things like that, where it just changes and it shifts depending on the party, depending on the year, depending on the group of people that get a hold of it. And the media. This has uh, several movies that have been based off it in the last couple decades, I guess. Yeah, if you look up Kuchisake Ona, you get a lot of really fun visuals that are out there, not just in movies, but in just stills and, and photographs and artwork that is created based on her. Yes. So I, and that is one thing I want to do is I want to go back because there is a very particular movie that if you do search for her, that thing will pop up all over the place. So I definitely want to go and see what that movie is all about, see how the legend comes across in that story. Well, we do hope that you've enjoyed Candy Coated Ghost Stories, a story written by Michael about the Kuchisake Ona. Takes it out of that classic literature and kind of drops us over here in our modern day urban legend category. Yeah, let us know if you like the whole urban legend aspect as well. I, I mean, Japan has a lot of urban legends and you know we've talked about doing more of those. I, I think it would be fun. They've got a bit of a different flavor than most of your yokai tales. Yeah, definitely. And it certainly mixes things up a little bit, keeps it fresh. We enjoy doing that kind of stuff. So if you enjoy it, let us know. We'd love to do more, whether we find stories that are out there or use a story from a listener or just continue writing our own. It, it certainly stirs the pot up and we enjoy that. So as always, you can find us at themonsterguys.com on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram. Just look us up at the Monster Guys. We'd love to hear from you. Uh, help us continue the conversation about the Kucha Sakayona and share your thoughts, your insights, your perceptions, or your experiences. And in the meantime, keep a pocket full of candy ready to go. Good night. Good night, guys. <laughs>